Hello everyone. Welcome to my talk about static analysis tools for embedded systems and how to use them. I hope you enjoyed ELCE 2020 online so far. A quick introduction. My name is Jan Simon Müller. I'm the release manager for automotive grade Linux and I'm also a board member of the Octo project representing AGL there. You can reach me on IRC or through email uh, if you have any follow-up questions. In this talk, I want to um, introduce static analysis and uh, show that uh, how it can be used, what it produces, and how to embed this later on in your Yocto based project. So I'll start with some introduction and motivation. Um, I'll discuss uh, some differences about kernel versus user space, uh, what tooling exists there. Uh, I'll give a quick intro how to use tools locally during development so you can go right hands on um, and try that. And um, the main part is then about two projects. One is called Meta SCA, uh, which is a collection of tools that include uh, static analysis and about Meta Code Scanner, which integrates uh, the Code Scanner projects into uh, the Yocto based build process. In the end, um, we'll do a couple Q and A. So the motivation behind all of this, um, what is static analysis? So static analysis means we do analyze a program without actually executing. So in general, most of the time, that means static analysis runs at build time. Most of the time, for example, through your compiler, because the compiler does some sort of analysis, analysis anyway. So why not use that um, right away? Or there are tools that will scan your source code in different ways. In contrast, dynamic analysis is usually uh, done by executing the program in question, which of course has uh, catches a different set of issues, mainly multi-threading issues. So things that you really only quote unquote see at runtime. Um, static analysis becomes um, an important topic once you need to deal with functional safety aspects and when you need to prove that your code meets certain criteria. So this can be done with static analysis tools um, and basically you can create the necessary um, documentation um, out of that then. That is the case in automation or automotive. So in the case of AGL or the ELISA project, uh, we have to fulfill and document requirements on code quality for our own code and we need to do uh, certain checks on open source code that is reused. Um, there can be different levels of requirements uh, based on um, what function you need to provide, but um, in general, um, that is the need. The goal 
uh, of this talk is to show you ways to do this using open source tooling uh, and uh, introduce and evangelize the tools that are available. So first of all, I will introduce some basics, um, introduce some of the tools that exist, and then go into how to embed this into your open embedded or Yocto based project. First, a few words around kernel versus user space. So the kernel is a very big project and it has kind of a special code base. Um, don't quote me on the number, probably I got it wrong, but there are millions of lines of code in the kernel, which means it's very demanding on the tooling used. Um, if you do uh, such an analysis, yeah, just by the sheer amount of uh, code within the kernel. Um, also, there are specialized tools uh, in use around the kernel and uh, in its workflow. If you work with the kernel, uh, one quite common tool is the uh, check patch script, which is used by a lot of maintainers to um, check the incoming patches for basic style and kind of the usual issues um, that you see in code. Um, this is based on kind of string matching and um, it's a very good thing if you check your patch to be submitted before you upload or mail it with check patch. Um, the compilers, especially Clang, have a long history, meanwhile, on dealing um, with uh, anal analyzing the Linux kernel. Um, and um, they can be used with their uh, built-in methods. I'll introduce these later. There are three more uh, quite common tools. Uh, one is uh, a tool called sparse, which you can call with the command line show here, make c equals one, check equals sparse. Um, there is smatch, which is a generic framework. So uh, you can actually write your own uh, rule set, um, like here, minus p equals kernel, um, I think there is a rule set for wine. There are different uh, rule sets already available. So this is a kind of a framework to do your own um, uh, analysis plugins if you have special requirements. And finally, Coquinel, um, which is a very powerful tool to match and replace uh, code patterns. So it is used in the kernel to do um, large um, replacement operations. And, uh, but it can also just warn on certain patterns. So there is a pattern database um, and that can be invoked uh, with the shown command line. I mean, of course, there are then also proprietary tools, uh, but uh, those I won't cover here in this talk. For user space, there are a large number of tools available. Um, some are old, some are new. Um, I will cover a selection here and uh, show how to use these. Um, the first three GCC, Clang, CPP, Check are quite common tools for C or C++ based uh, projects. Uh, GCC and Clang as compilers 
they do the ana analysis internally anyway. So this is merely enabling uh, capabilities within the compilers, which makes it quite easy to use, frankly. Um, you just have to enable the appropriate flags. Um, CPP check is then a standalone tool which uh, allows you to scan your source code upfront or standalone. Same with Flaw Finder, Rats, and Splint. Uh, Flaw Finder has a little more, um, has more an eye on, on security issues than um, um, yeah, bare bad code. So locally, during de your development, it is very easy to enable static analysis uh, functionality. I'll show three tools a little deeper, GCC, Clang, and CPP check. So GCC has, since GCC 10, uh, a new flag called F Analyzer. And F Analyzer will enable certain warnings um, that can be uh, used to warn on certain um, yeah, code issues. Clang has, uh, since uh, very early times, the scan build tool set. Um, so this is easy to just take scan build and then run your make command um, to compile the code. And CPP check in the end uh, will scan your source tree standalone. This is how you can use the new F analyzer. In this case, we also enable minus W error. So any, any warning will be treated as error. So this will abort if any issue is found. And you see, meanwhile, there is a lot of progress and on making the output very intuitive and useful to the developer. So this is a very neat feature that GCC has developed meanwhile. Clang has um, quite a few tools um, that allow us to do static analysis. One is Clang Tidy, uh, which will scan your source code and report any issues found on the command line. There are other Clang-based tools. Um, one is scan build, uh, but I'll show these a little later. Here's scan build. So scan build will be used on a complete project in this case. So we'll call a make file, which will do all the compilation steps. The make file needs to use the variables like cc, uh, $cc, uh, so it can be overwritten by scan build. So don't hard code any compiler name in your make files. And then you can use a scan build as shown here. Scan build will do two things. It will output the issues found, much like Clang Tidy, which is kind of the um, console only um, command line tool. 
and scan build takes this one step further. It will report and it will generate a browsable um, report out of the findings, which can be useful for larger code bases. Um, and you can then browse this in a browser window and it will show you the individual issues found and um, in, a, in a graphical UI. So this is quite handy for larger projects. Finally, CPP check. So CPP check is a standalone tool. It will not compile the code, but it will warn on issues found in the code base. So this is useful in a CI setup when you don't want to scan, uh, build the code to scan it. Uh, you could just run this um, and uh, if anything is reported, basically report that back right away. So after the uh, quick introduction, uh, I want to go over and introduce Meta SCA. Meta SCA is a collection of tools which will do static analysis, but they will also do linting and uh, other things that you can use in your Open Embedded or Yocto based project. As I said, it's an Open Embedded or Yocto project compatible layer. It's a collection of multiple tools around source code analysis. The project has zero impact, which means all operations are done at build time and none of the code reaches the target file system. So this is quite um, important once you do production, uh, once you want to scan a production code base and not modify the outcome. It provides a consistent way how to configure figure all the tools included and it also has a unified output format. There are parsers available for command line and a simple static pre-rendered web UI. It's being developed and maintained by Konrad Weimann and uh, you can find it on GitHub. This is the repo. Um, it supports the uh, usual branches uh, of Yocto, Master, Dunfell, the LTS branch, and so on. So this is very, um, uh, very up to date. I mentioned already there is uh, a web UI that can be used. So this is uh, statically rendered from your generated data. As you can see here, there are lots of scanners integrated and lots of tools integrated, being it the already mentioned uh, CPP Jack, CPP Lint, Clang, but also scanners for Bash, for scripts, for um, Ansible, for Bitbake itself. Um, so there are a big number of tools integrated here. So you basically can pick and choose. So this is very useful. And you see there are tools around static analysis, there are tools around CVEs, there are tools 
um, for other languages than C and C++, Python, um, Go, um, JavaScript. Um, so this is a very, very extensive collection. Beside programming languages, there is also tools for kernel config hardening. Um, there is tools for license checking available, um, coding metrics. So if you are looking for something useful, um, here you will likely find a tool that will help you. And the good point is that Meta SCA will integrate and allow you to configure all of this through BitBake variables in your local.conf. So in total, we have about 87 to 90 options, which is quite a lot. So to summarize, we have a large number of languages supported, ranging from C, C++, Python, Perl, PHP, JavaScript, Go, Lua, uh, everything is in there. We have spelling checkers, we have metrics, and we have multiple scopes covered. You will find security checkers in there, you will find functional checkers in there, you will find style checkers in there. Now, I also want you to uh, get uh, your hands dirty and try this out. So here's a quick step-by-step -step guide um, which uh, will do a test run on the master branch uh, but you can also just jump on the Dunfell branches of all the repos as well if you um, want the stable release of everything. So TLDR, we need Meta SCA, but we also need Meta Clang, which is optional, but provides the Clang-based checkers. And we will clone Pokey. Uh, alternatively, you can also pull down open embedded and bit bake. We create a project, we add the layers uh, meta clang and meta SCA and now next we will edit our uh, conf local.conf. So by adding the layer meta SCA will not enable anything by default which is a good thing um, because meanwhile you tend to have multiple layers in a stack and the testing layer should not modify any behavior by itself. First of all, we will have to inherit a class. So we inherit SCA. That alone is not enough we will have to throw a switch. So SCA enable is the switch. Uh, we can do that either at the global level or we can do that uh, at the recipe level. So that is up to us. There is also an option available to skip certain layers. Once we enable it globally, we can also exempt certain layers by name. There are options to make the scan automatically enabled on an image or on a recipe. We can exempt certain licenses if necessary in our scan procedures. And finally, we do 
define which modules are available. So, for example, um, we would enable the RAD scanner, we would enable Clang, a static analysis, and we would enable CBE check as example. So those modules are available, which means the tooling will be built. And um, then we say for recipes, we do run these three tools, RADS, CLANG, CVE check. There is another enabled modules by image, which lets us do image based things um, as well. There are also ways to exempt um, packages by tool that we run. So, for example, um, in this case, we would skip um, the LIBC headers, GCC LIBC. Um, uh, they are quite large, and for for this test, I will exempt those big packages. Yeah, finally, uh, we do run BitBake Core Image Minimal, which will then kick the whole process off. Once everything is done, we will have a result folder deployed in Temp Deploy Images QMOX8664 SCA and each package will have its own um, result file then in there. There is a tool included in Meta SCA which will parse out the result files and make them readable on the command line. Result files are in JSON format uh, and uh, this will make it readable on the terminal. So for example, um, we pick one package base pass WD and you will see the format is tool at package name and then the message. Also, there's a script to generate um, Web, a static web page, which will show the issues found in a more graphical manner. So let's summarize. Um, so Meta SCA can be used to easily instrument your whole project builds. It can be used for linting and format checks uh, in your CI. And there's a lot of pre-integrated tools to choose from. And it also has a unified report format. On the flip side, you will have to post-process the reports in some way uh, that fits your needs. Um, but yeah, that's up to you, either the command line report, the web report, uh, or you do some custom post-processing. Next, let me introduce uh, a project called Meta Code Checker, um, which I did. It is the BitBake integration for a tool called Code Checker uh, that you find um, on the right side on GitHub as well. So, what is Meta Code Checker? Um, it integrates the code checker tool that uh, Ericsson develops on GitHub. Code checker is basically the successor of the scan build tooling. So it's a, it's a scan build on steroids um, if, uh, if you compare those. It's a collection of tools and it will 
do two things. A, it will intercept and lock the compiler calls. With that captured log, we can analyze the data by running Clang tidy and Clang SA, uh, Clang static analysis. So, which means we do, for example, any compile run, we will log what compiler calls were executed with which options. And in a second pass, we will then rerun the compilation calls, but with Clang um, and the necessary flags. In the end, we get a report um, which is either static HTML um, or we can upload the data to a database with web front end. The project is on GitHub and it's very actively developed. Um, the uh, documentation is on read the docs. Um, so that's very easy to come by. What's not that easy is um, the uh, how you compile the the tooling. Um, the, the scanner is fine. The uh, the web tooling is a little bit complicated, but uh, as there are Docker containers provided. Um, you don't have to dig into that. This is an example for the web UI. Um, it's pretty uh, slick. You, you see the package is scanned here. You see the number of uh, reports. You can review those. You have different uh, products. You have different categories. So um, that will help you manage the amount of uh, data that comes in. Now, how can you use that on your local projects? Once you have Code Checker built and in your path, um, mainly they are Python helpers, um, so it is um, rather easy to set up. You run code checker in your project. Um, first, there's a log pass, uh, which writes out its finding to uh, a log file. This works in a way that we preload a library, and this is a logger which stores the compiler command. So for example, we do GCC, uh, minus i something minus f what not uh, foobar.c. Then the logger will find, okay, we are executing GCC. Um, we can even influence that with an environment variable and say, okay, um, we called uh, the compiler with minus i minus f something foobar.c. So we'll record all the options that were executed and which file name and so on. That will be written to compilation.json. With those extracted commands, we can then replay the compilation using Clang and its tools um, and do a full analysis pass. The output will then be in a folder called reports. And now from there, we can either parse the findings on the command line, we can produce an HTML report, or we can use the store command to upload it to the web UI, which can be the Docker compiler on your local, uh, the Docker uh, container on your local machine.
that would be this. And uh, from there, you can inspect the findings. So for example, here is one thing which is 32 levels deep. Um, I'm not sure I would catch something like this, um, traveling a couple of times up and down the code base. Now, I need to run this against a whole project and not against a single uh, source tree. I have actually multiple source trees which are built with uh, Bitbake. So I created an integration for Bitbake. There is um, some integration hints mentioned on the website, but they will basically preload the library before Bitbake runs. So we will lock any um, compilation calls. Now, if you run Bitbake, you will not only build target um, binaries, you will also do helpers on the host. So you would have all the these in the reports and it's not split by package. So um, the integration shown here does that by package and we can influence the way how it is uh, done during the build. We can write out the HTML reports, we can upload to the database and we come with uh, as many batteries included as we need uh, and we build the necessary tools on the fly. Which means the, the layer needs a meta clang, meta OE, meta Python to be present. So here's a step-by-step -step guide how to do that locally um, with the um, Bitbake. So first of all, we need MetaClang. We need uh, some. Uh, we need Meta Open Embedded pulled down, and we need Meta Code Checker. Um, we need Pokey. We create a new project, and we add the layers: Clang first, then Meta OE, then Meta Python, and then Meta Code Checker. So here's how you enable Code Checker. First of all, you need to inherit the class. Next, we will have to enable it specifically. This is very similar to how Meta SCA works. So we need to inherit the class and we need to enable it. Now, I do not care in my case for the packages that run on the host. So. I do not need it to run on the native builds. So this would be class native. Instead, I only care about packages that end up on the target. That's why I enable it for the class target. I also exempt uh, Clang. Um, it's a very large code base, uh, but um, yeah, it's only used for development uh, mainly, so I, I exempt that. Um, and I enable the HTML report. There is also the flag how to upload it. Um, you'll find that in the readme. So here in this example, we'll create local HTML reports and you can browse them later on. You kick off the build with Bitbake, and then all your results will be in temp deploy code checker. We enabled the HTML reports, so you will have subfolders per package containing the HTML reports. Let's summarize. Code checker can be used by developers and in CI as well. Um, 
The complexity is hidden by the preloaded logger, which is even configurable. Um, the workflow is straightforward and there are parsers available into multiple formats. Also a web UI is available to store your results for later review. A BitBake integration is also available using the Meta code checker layer. The documentation is good, but here and there are a few uh, pages with issues. Uh, I'm sure patches are welcome on the upstream GitHub site. So as summary, we can say, use static analysis and it will help you to improve your code base. With GCC 10, it's very easy to use locally for development. Just enable F analyze. Um, also, you should enable minus W error. And you can also integrate these easily using the open embedded or Yocto layers shown here in this talk. So as a lookout, um, my, uh, I want to promote the use of these tools in the various projects, raise the bar um, in open source in general, and um, I will also enhance Meta Code Checker further and update it further. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, and so on, please try it. Um, I'm uh, happy about any feedback on the Meta Code Checker layer. Thank you for joining my talk and I hope you have a nice rest of the conference.